10 Things About the Human Body You Probably Don't Know It's astounding that most of us know so little about the body we live in every day, but we don't have to be doctors to understand how amazing and weird our bodies are. Here are 10 simple, fascinating things you probably didn't know about the human body. Number 1. Your ears and nose continue to grow as you age. Or should we say, droop. If you already knew this fact, then chances are you learned that cartilage in your nose and ears continues to grow, whilst other tissue types don't. This is false, and presumably comes from studies of sharks, in which the cartilage does in fact continue growing throughout their lives. In humans, however, the cause of this apparent growth is merely gravity. The nose is made up of hyaline cartilage, composed of large proteins such as collagen. The ears are made up of elastic cartilage, which also has elastic fibres to give it more flexibility. The collagen and elastic fibres which make up our cartilage begin to break down, causing our features to sag in much the same way as our skin does, leading to the appearance of enlarged features. Number 2. The gastric acid in your stomach has a pH of approximately 2.5. This means it's acidic enough to dissolve metal, but mainly the stomach is content to break down proteins for digestion. The acidic properties of stomach acid can be attributed to the hydrochloric acid produced by parietal cells in the stomach lining. So why doesn't the stomach digest itself? Through a negative feedback system, the stomach carefully monitors its acidity. To decrease acidity, cells in the stomach lining and duodenum, the beginning of the small intestine, produce bicarbonate, a strong base which neutralizes hydrochloric acid. Furthermore, the stomach is constantly protected by a barrier of mucus. However, one strain of bacteria, Helicobacter pylori, attacks this lining, allowing the acid to damage your stomach. This is one way in which peptic ulcers are formed. Number 3. Goosebumps, so called for their resemblance to the skin of a plucked goose, occur when someone is exposed to cold or fear. You probably already knew that, but why does this happen? The answer is, as it usually is, that the response is vestigial. Other mammals have fur coats covering their body, meaning that when their hair stands on end, it has an effect, unlike our tiny hairs. In a response to cold, this thicker layer of hair creates a larger insulating barrier to trap heat in, keeping animals warm. What about fear, though? Well, fear activates the fight-or-flight response, releasing adrenaline which, amongst other things, causes goosebumps. This makes the animal appear larger than it really is to intimidate its aggressor. Oh, and by the way, the official term for goosebumps is piloerection, due to the erector action of the erector pili muscles at the base of hair follicles. Just thought you might enjoy knowing that. Number 4. For every cell you have in your body, there's a bacteria buddy to match it. And then some. A recent study undertaken by academics at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Rehavot, Israel, attempted to debunk the common myth that the ratio of bacteria to cells in the reference man was 10 to 1. Their results showed that this number was actually closer to 1.3 to 1, or 3.9 times 10 to the power of 13 to 3 times 10 to the power of 13. Don't be worried though, these guys are usually helpful. Microbiota, or microflora, help us digest food, synthesize vitamins, and create enzymes not produced by the body. There is even strong evidence to suggest that gut microbiota produce neurochemicals, allowing them to communicate with our brains. This has led researchers to think of microbiota as a virtual organ, since it has all the functionality and necessity of any of our other organs. The topic is an emerging field in neuroscience, questioning whether our microbiota can be so influential as to affect our personality. Number 5. Ever notice that indentation just below your nose, above your upper lip? It's called the philtrum, or medial cleft. In humans and primates, the philtrum is vestigial, having no function but maintained through evolution. In other mammals, however, the philtrum is an important structure for increasing their sense of smell. Essentially, the philtrum carries moisture from the mouth to the rhinarium via capillary action. The rhinarium is the wet part around the nostrils, which acts to trap odors. A dry nose means less odor capturing ability and less sensitivity. The word philtrum derives from the Greek word philtron, meaning a love potion or love charm. Why call a moisture trapping passage a love charm? Because the Greeks thought that the philtrum was one of the most erogenous zones on the body. Maybe that's why Hitler always kept his covered up. Number 6. You can remain conscious for up to 20 seconds after being decapitated. Yeah, you, you probably thought this was going to get brighter after that Hitler reference, right? I don't fucking know. No such luck, I'm afraid. The logic behind this stems from the fact that there's still enough blood in the head to maintain awareness, like the inverse case of a chicken running around with its head cut off. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence to back this up, so take your pick. One tale, the most famous, tells of a scientist who told his assistant to count how many times he could blink after being decapitated since he was sentenced to the guillotine in the 1700s. Stories range from mere eye-twitching to full-on pilgrimages. Saint Denis, patron saint of Paris, is said to have picked up his head and walked 6 miles, or 10 kilometers, whilst preaching a sermon. We'll be honest, that one probably isn't true. 
As for the rest of the stories, there's no real way to know without an experiment. Any volunteers? Number 7. Your gastrointestinal tract moves food via a series of smooth muscle contractions known as peristalsis. Issues with this movement lead to a variety of common medical issues. Constipation results due to a slowed peristalsis. This means more water is absorbed from your food, drying it and making it harder to excrete. Diarrhea, as you can probably guess, is the exact opposite issue. If the food moves through you too quickly, it stays liquid in form. But what if peristalsis moves in the other direction? Well, then you're in for a bad time. Reverse peristalsis, as it is imaginatively named, is one of the major steps in vomiting. Vomiting is caused by the stimulation of the emetic center in the brain by factors such as local stomach irritation or even emotional response, for example, fear. This reverse peristaltic movement can bring food from as far down as the beginning of the small intestine, up through the stomach and esophagus bringing your stomach acid with it. And thanks to number two on this list, we can all imagine exactly how that feels. Number eight. Imagine flirting with your crush, admiring their long, luxurious lashes, when suddenly they have mites in their eyelashes. But hey, don't be so picky. You have mites in your eyelashes too. In fact, everyone does. Demodex folliculorum, literally meaning lard worm of the follicle, are mites which feed off of skin cells and oil, or sebum, around your eyebrows, eyelashes, and other hairy regions. For the most part, they're completely harmless. For the most part, that is. Demodex infestations can lead to rosacea, a condition characterized by red skin, superficial dilation of the blood vessels, and swelling in the face. They've also been implicated in blepharitis, an inflammation of the eyelid. So next time you make a wish on an eyelash, wish that your face doesn't become red and itchy and blow that sucker as far away as possible. After all, I doubt your crush would appreciate that. Number 9. Your heart can keep beating even after being separated from the body. The sinoatrial node, or SA node, generates an electrical impulse which causes contraction of the left and right atria in a downwards motion. The impulse then passes down to the atrioventricular node, or AV node, to the bottom of the ventricles and causes an upwards contraction. In this way, your heart rate is determined, with an increased conductivity in your nodes leading to a slower heart rate. So how does the SA node generate an impulse if your heart isn't connected to your body? Well, the SA node is composed of autorhythmic cells, cells that spontaneously depolarize. Depolarization means that sodium ions rush into your cells, creating an electrical impulse. Just to be clear, the brain does have some control over your heartbeat. For example, studies have shown that listening to different types of music can either increase or decrease your heart rate. Number 10. Cells in your body undergo suicide. More appropriately, this process is known as apoptosis, or programmed cell death. But don't worry, they're doing it for your own benefit. Apoptosis is one way in which the body controls cell numbers to maintain a sustainable and consistent amount. Furthermore, it's preferable to necrosis, forced cell death as a result of external factors, for example injury, poison, etc., which can lead to further complications. In embryonic development, the webbing connecting your fingers together is deleted via apoptosis to form mature finger structures. The debris of these cells is then cleaned up by macrophages and recycled. However, apoptosis can go wrong. One method of preventing virus spread is for infected cells to undergo apoptosis. This is effective, but many viruses have evolved to hijack biochemical pathways, shutting down the signals that would cause a cell to react properly. Another example involves cancer, wherein cells that should die off instead trigger signaling cascades, causing rapid cell growth and suppression of apoptosis mechanisms. Follow Culture Crush on social media! If you would like to support the show, then head on over to the Culture Crash Patreon page where you can receive rewards for your support. Every bit counts.